Hello, welcome to Sky Bite Size with me, Dan Cox. Uh, once again, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please can you do that for me? Um, also, any likes be appreciated as well. That's all great. Um, right, let's get into it. Let's have a quick look at game week 18, which is a busy, busy week. Everyone's got two fixtures, so, well, maybe. Let's have a start having a look. So Friday there, Brentford v Watford. Um, I'll have Mbwemo as captain. Uh, did actually get some points at the weekend, got an assist. Uh, quite surprised after just two pointers every week, even one pointers. So um, yeah, he'll be mine. Um, people might, well, what is, he's in quite a lot of teams. I think he's in a good 17% of teams. So I think quite a lot of people will have him. But um, yeah, other op options if people might have Pinnock, Fernandez, the goalkeeper of Brentford. Norgard even, but um, yeah, not expecting too much. Um, I think I'll probably just, like four points from Bremo might get an assist or something. You never know, but I'm not expecting too much. But I'm more looking forward to getting rid of him after the Friday game because I've held him for this long. And like I always say, just end up having players in your team that you don't really want just to cover off a fixture that ain't really the best. So keep doing it though. So so that's Friday anyway. Um, if you ain't got anyone probably wouldn't bother to be honest but I've got Mbwemo and um, let's hope you get some returns. Saturday Man City the early kickoff so you can see if uh, Cancelo's starting or Diaz you know if, or even if you've got a midfield or someone like that. Um, Salah obviously home to Villa. I know he is I think it did I'm recording this Wednesday morning so he played last night but I think he went off just after 60 minutes so he should be good to go against Villa so um, it'll probably be my captain. Um, when I thought he'd get rested, you know, but you know, it's always it is a slight risk, but I can't see it. So I'll be on Salah. A few people might have Ronaldo uh, away to Norwich. Um, yeah, I think he's a good show. Any of them are options, really? I've gone a bit off the Chelsea defenders, defensive assets, really. You know, um, haven't been keeping the clean sheets. Pretty terrible last week against West Ham. So um, lost a bit of faith in them. So that's Saturday. Sunday. So as I said, I'm recording this Wednesday morning. I haven't really heard about this Spurs Brighton game. Spurs players got COVID and this, that, and the other. So I'm um, not quite sure on that. I'm hearing they, you know, they might try to get the game called off if they got these players out. Whether that will happen or not, but you know, if that game's not happening, they're in, they're in a lot of choices for Sunday. He got like, and he's not very particularly well owned, but Vardy home to Newcastle would be a good one. He didn't play, didn't start the last game, so you know. He could be a shout, so, you know, against Newcastle. Yeah, you you wouldn't bet against Vardy getting a goal or two if he started. Burnley, West Ham, Antonio. Antonio's gone on a bit of a barren run. and I, I don't think he scored in the last five or six or something like that. So they've got some decent games coming up. So I wouldn't be against bringing Antonio in. He would be a good choice. Got to start scoring again, surely, any soon. But then I've been saying that Harry Kane for a while. If Brighton Spurs is on, Kane, Son, Kane just... I've had him for so long now. He got shots bonus last weekend. Kind of felt like he'd uh, scored a couple of goals. At least he just gets more than two points. But yes, yeah, so disappointing. And then Palace Everton. If he got Gallagher, I say I wouldn't. Well, he might get tackles or something. I wouldn't be. You know, think he's going to get massive points. Any Everton players? Gray. If you held on to him this long, like he was a thirty-point captain on Monday, just ridiculous, really. Um, so yeah, Sunday if that Spurs game's off and. Um, I think a few of us are going to be sort of scraping the barrel for a captain. Then on to Tuesday, the best thing is you can see all the lineups again before making your captain call. So Ronaldo, a Man City defender. I think that's that's it really. You ain't got to think too much about those. On to Wednesday, give it a jot down for Wednesday. Again, not too many options. If you've gone for like the Antonio move, I'd fancy him against Arsenal. they just, I don't know. I can see West Ham beating Arsenal anyway, but yeah, I don't really rate them. But yeah, who else? Rice, uh, Bowen you might go for, Gallagher again. Brighton got most of the defence out, so if you did have Dunk or Webster or something like that, that's obviously not an option, and Burnley Watford's a, no one in that for me. Um, well, unless you're going for the Dennis route, Dennis might be an option. I'll just go back, see you uh, do you know what saying that for Friday? If you ain't got anyone, Dennis maybe could actually come in for your Friday. You know, if you're going to restructure your team, 
don't know about all this AFCON stuff. We'll get onto that in a little while. But Dennis, I did forget Dennis Friday night. Could be an option. Anyway, going back to Wednesday. So yeah, Dennis, Antonio, Ramsdale. Oh, I had Ramsdale on Monday. It was a bit of a disappointment, but at least he did get the saves bonus. So that was something. And then Thursday, a better one, Salah, Vardy, if you've gone for him, if he's going to start twice in a in a week. Um, Kane, if you're putting yourself through that pain and holding him on. Um, or even then you could Trent, Van Dijk, someone like that. But a bit of a tr- tricky week, I think, with especially with the Sunday and the Wednesday games. So, um, you know, something to think about. These are the uh, transfers since the uh, 30th of November there. So I, I cut it off yesterday. So I gave them over the last week. So that was till the uh, lunchtime on the 7th of December. So over that over that week period, Bernardo Silva, the most in. Over 10,000 teams. Again, did great at the weekend. Another 16 points. Uh, Jota into 7,700. Just a two-pointer of the weekend. Uh, Smith Rowe was brought into over 5,500 teams. So... Disappointed for them that he was uh, injured. You know, might have been their captain option for Monday. Um, so, yeah, unfortunate. Don't know much more about his injury, how long he's going to be out, but it's something to keep an eye on. Rafina into over another 5,000 teams. Um, surprisingly, I know a lot of people are talking to getting rid of him still because of their fixtures, and it's now sort of rumoured that Bamford's going to be out and Phillips going to be out. And I've sort of thought all season that Leeds would struggle. That's why I ain't had him, but... Um, you know, I don't know. I've never had him, so I don't know. If I if I had him, I, I probably would move him on, I think. I would have moved him on already. So, um, But then he was a good captain last week when he jammed me like 93rd minute penalty or something like that. Just uh, killed me that. So, I don't know, Rafinha, sick of talking about him, to be honest. Uh, Cancelo into 4,500 teams. Uh, since everyone's been bringing him in, they, Man City hadn't kept any clean sheets, so they keep letting goals in. So, annoying. And... As did just mention about Dennis into three thousand two hundred teams, so cheap, isn't he? Um, five point five million, and then I still don't know about this Afcon. People are saying he's fell out with the manager, um, hadn't played for him for over a year or something like this. Um, apparently, he has been named in the provisional squad. Honestly, don't know. Had to wait until we hear more about it. But for five point five million, he is great. As I said before, I've written an article last week about him. The only problem is if he he's then not in the team or he does go off and they're now even saying the AFCON might start earlier. That's all a bit of a mess, this AFCON that he's doing the head in there. Now saying they might be going, I think, even before the Boxing Day games or something. I don't know. But anyway, if you've got a player in there at 5.5 million who then you need to get rid of and you've got no budget to do so, it's then you're looking at two or three transfers to sort it out. So that is the only concern with him. So maybe we might find out something a bit more this week about the AFCON. I don't know. Um, other ones again if you go to FF stuff you can check these stats yourself um, and have a look at them I won't go through them all uh, let's look else on the list Ramsdale into 3,000 teams so been pretty gutted with that uh, Monday night captaincy that's the reason I brought him in for I was hoping for a clean sheet you know a good sort of 20 odd points or something like that so to just get 6 points is a bit you know I had Saar in goal for Wolves and um, I did say to uh, Luke Williams disable but Probably better off just keeping Saar, keep the transfer. But I made the move to Ramsdale, so yeah, disappointed with that. Um, let's have a look at the outs. Again, same period, since the 30th of November. So Antonio, the most out, 7,700. Yes, he ain't been, been doing great. But I fancy him now. I think West Ham got some good games. You, That's the sort of time I think I'd bring some money in when people are getting rid of him. That might be something I'll be looking at because I need to make some places up. So go against the crowd is what I like to try to do. You don't, we don't always want to end up with the same team and the same players because you just end up just staying where you are, you know. So um, might be one I'm looking at. But anyway, Antonio was the most out. Then Ben Rama, yeah, Ben Rama at six thousand seven hundred. He's been, he has been disappointing. He's got like one attack and return, any one assist in the last ten Premier League games. So yeah, not really good enough. Chalaba, who might even be back earlier, I think. That's not as bad as first feared the injury, so I'm going to keep an eye on, but he's at a 6,200 teams. He's got 74 points. I think he did sort of go under the radar. Only 7.5 million. He was playing a lot. So, um, yeah, have to see how that sort of plays out, especially with Rudiger and 
Christian Simula's contract situation at Chelsea, so might be one to keep an eye on. Duffy has been, he's the next one out. What is he out of 5,800? He's another one who's been sort of saying to get rid of for ages, but he just keeps staying in the team because of injuries to Webster and now Dunk. He is suspended now, but he's sort of one of the ones we could just could just leave him because it looks like he's just going to keep playing at the minute, but um, it's a bit of a concern with Brighton, all the injuries, so yeah, you can get rid. And then Cresswell out of 4,200, missed the last couple of games through injury, so yeah, I can see that as well. Let's move on to the ownership. Not change too much. Salah top 95%, Cancelo 93%, Conor Gallagher 89%, Rafinha still quite high 76%, Rudiger 74 Harry Kane shocking in at 50% of teams and just you know if you've got Kane like me and you're thinking what am I doing at least there's a, like another 500 managers in the top thousand who are going through the same Ramsdale shot up from 21% owned to a 42% owned after Monday so a lot of people did that move as well the S36 Smith Rowe 36 so a lot of disappointed people there for Monday if they didn't have anyone else Ronaldo's creeping up 35% Mendy 35% might drop down a bit more because you know, you know he's off to AFCON and he had a shock a Saturday when he that was terrible um, not too much really else in there Alonso 28% supposed to be fine now after this back injury but he didn't look great the couple of games I've seen like you know seen him play for Chelsea in the highlights and that so a bit of a concern might have to ship him on anyway Bernardo Silva creeping up 23% uh, as I said at the start of the video, in Buemo, 17%, he'll be gone. After Friday, he'll mass exodus, you know, he'll be gone. Um, and then Hoiberg, bottom of the 20 there on 16%. Again, I always say FF stuff. Best place to keep an eye on all your points, bone, you know, tackles, pass and everything like that. So that's what I like to keep an eye on when there's a lot of games going on at the same time. So I've got the Watford Man City one up there. You can see Cancelo, Tier 1 passing, Laporte. Tier 2 passing, uh, shot bonus for Laporte, Diaz 105 passes, Walker 99 passes, so both Tier 2 passing bonus, Rodri Tier 2 passing bonus, Tier 2 tackle bonus, great solid sky pick Rodri, you had him since the start, Silver again, two goals, shots bonus, look at that, so he just missed off a passing bonus by three and he missed off on the tackles by one, so he could have had even more than the 16 points there. Um, and yes, Sterling, a goal. He's been in a little bit of decent form in the league, but probably not for me. But match centre on FF stuff. If you haven't checked it out, you really should. I thought I'd just load up the um, player total points from FF stuff as well. That looks looks nice on here. It's better than just reading the numbers off, um, you know, on the uh, Sky Fantasy site. So Salah, top, 171 points. Just miles ahead and he's just been unreal. Cancelo, 120 points. Van Dijk, 105. Trent, 103. And I don't think a lot of people have had Liverpool players from the off. They had sort of gone for the Chelsea, so they have been, you know, doing well racking up the points. Diaz, 96 points. Gallagher, 96. Bernardo Silva, 93. Vardy, 92. Mendy, 92. Started off great, been on a great run, not so much recently. Um, Allison, 92. And Rudiger, 91. That's the sort of top 10 there. You can, again, you can have a look at this yourself. Just in the top 10 there, four are defenders, two are goalkeepers, two midfielders, two forwards. So, again, you know, there's always value in those defenders and you just got to get the right strikers. That's it. And bonus points, just have a love having a look at the bonus. So, Cancelo leads the way there. You can see most of them is passing for him, but, you know, we can get tackles and shots, obviously, as we know. Rodri, again, passing and tackles, great for both of them. Diaz, obviously, mainly just passes, but he can get tackles occasionally. Um, Dunk, 29 points, so only a point behind Diaz for bonus. Another great sky pick when you think he's over 2 million cheaper than Diaz, you know, and he's got one bonus point less. I think he's great. Obviously, he's injured now, so if you've got him, he's got to go. He was in a fair few teams in the top thousands before the weekend, so um, a lot of transfers being made there. Declan Rice been ticking over nicely, a bit quieter in the last few weeks, but... For 7.4 million, I think he is a great pick. You can see there as well. So he's, you know, 12 points from passing, 14 from tackles, even got shots bonus as well once. So he can get, you know, passing or tackles. He's not just one or the other. Van Dyke for the passing, 20, you know, 27. Um, Laporte, 
25 points passing. He's got a shot bonus as well at the weekend. Um, that's it. Really, you can go through these or I'll read through them all, but I always like to have a look at the bonus points and see, you know, what sort of players you want in there. Gui mentioned a Palace. He, you know, he's got passing bonus, 19 points from that alone. Um, Thiago Silva have been doing great. Uh, cruel for saves, but when Norwich won a goal difference of minus 23 or something like that, not for me. Hoiberg slowed down recently, not so sure on him, but he had been ticked along nicely for passing and tackle bonus as well. You know, 25 points overall. Um, that's it. That's it, really. If you want to spend more time on it, you know, head over there and say, look at FF stuff yourself. Right, I'll move on to the questions. Again, thanks for all your questions you sent in on Twitter. I had quite a few, so I'll just I'll get through them as quick as I can. Um, again, I appreciate all your questions and, you know, contributions. Right. Hacking the Brighton problem with Dunk, Webster and Duffy all looking to be out. What do we now do? Um, well, it depends if the game goes ahead then at Sunday, but I've got Dunk. He'll be, he'll be gone this weekend. I need to make a bit of a plan really going forward. So yeah, get rid. Robert Wright. Kane has got to score at some point and it will be when I transfer him out. Is it time to swap him? Um, do you, if, if the game goes ahead Sunday and Brighton have got half the team out, then, uh, you know, if they're playing... Some of the academy kids or something like that came might be all right. So could be tempted to keep him. Obviously, keep an eye on the game. Obviously, obviously if the game's off, just get get rid. <clears throat> that will be typical that um that he'll score once you get rid of him. But I don't think you can worry about it really. Like he's only he's in fifty percent of teams. So <sighs> I don't know. I'm done with him. He's going. He's going regardless whether the game's on Sunday. So he's gone for me. Andrew Lee need to get rid of Aubameyang for someone. Yes. Would Aubameyang Zavadi be a good shout for captaincy option on Sunday? Otherwise, his only option is Gallagher. Yeah, I'd say so. So, yeah, Vardy would be a good captain. Whether we're then playing midweek, oh, there's a bit of a concern. But if you can get a couple of goals on Sunday and get your 20-odd, 20 25 point, you know, something like that, I think it could be worth it. So, um, yeah, but with the amount of games in December, it's a bit of a worry with Vardy and start, you know, you know he's not going to start all of them. Uh, Jay, hi, Dan. What's your plan with Kane? Is Ronaldo the best replacement? Yeah, I think so. It, you could. I know there's no fixture to gain, but again, if the Spurs game's off Sunday, it's even better. But yeah, Ronaldo versus Norwich, I think you'd, I'd take that over Kane away to Brighton, even with a half defence out. Uh, Julian Wardle, if injury to the Smith throw is more long term, thinking Rice or Bowen, which one do you prefer? Rice is steady, and he, you know, he's not spectacular, but if he's steady, Bowen. Would probably be more two points, two points, 10, 12 points, two, two, something like that. So it depends what you prefer, really, if you want a bit of safety, sort of a bonus, or, you know, the two different types of players, aren't they? So it, I think both are good picks. So either or, really, I'd probably say Bowen myself, but it depends. You know, he's a little bit more money in he. So whatever, whatever you can get to. Uh, Julian again. How many transfers are people planning to have at overhaul, given Chelsea and the Club World Cup? Uh, given that none of the transfers we want, do we just suck up some of the damage, injuries, and potential COVID postponements may cause? Um, <clears throat> I think I'll, I'll want to have about 20 for the overhaul. I think if you're even at that, about 16, 17, 18 is all right. Um, yeah, we know there's going to be some um, players not starting when you want them and stuff. Like, you know, like it was Monday with Smith Row. I think sometimes you just miss it. If you ain't got anyone for Friday and you don't want to go Dennis or anyone like that, then just skip it. Um, like people saying with Ronaldo, bring Ronaldo in for the uh, cover off the Man U games. You just know he won't start one of those games. Is it against like Burnley or Wolves? Or you know, there's be one of them, and he won't. St he's not going to start them all. I don't think so. You know, you love it, but a lot of people be in the same boat. So yeah, that's why I wouldn't then think, oh, I'll transfer in Rashford just for that night. I just just got to take on the chin, really. Another question here: FPL Commander, is it sensible to keep Son versus Brighton? And ignore Ronaldo's game v Norwich and change him instead for the Brentford game next Tuesday instead. I've just got FF grid up. So, what's he saying? Change for the uh, Ronaldo v Brentford. Let's have a look on here. Um, so, you'd have Son. Depends who you got as captain on Sunday. You know, if if that if the Brighton Spurs game is going ahead. Well, Son, Son, Son's apparently one of the ones rumoured to have COVID, in he? So, you've got to keep an eye on that closely. But if he's going to play and he... You know, probably is a good captaincy option. Yeah, you could 
could miss out on Ronaldo away to Norwich. You know, most people are going to be on Salah Saturday anyway, so, you know, it's not like everyone's going to be captain in Ronaldo. So, yeah, you could do, but you've really got to keep an eye on the, uh, the Spurs and Son COVID news because you might just have to make that switch to Ronaldo on Saturday against Norwich anyway. Uh, John, I transferred out Salah for Ronaldo and kept Kane in case he got a hat-trick against Norwich. Should I get Salah straight back in for the Villa game and get Kane out? Uh, yes, yeah, I would. I'd just do that. I don't think that's a big risk not having Salah against Villa at home. Um, and just Kane, just, you know, the ownership of Salah at nearly like 100% in the top 1,000 compared to Kane. You know, Kane, Salah will hurt you more than Kane. So I would. Jake Bostock, Pinnock to Dennis before Friday, or would you class that as too much of a lux- luxury transfers with no extra games? Um He's a bit cheaper than Pinnock. Um, depends if you you know if you don't want Pinnock going forward, but you do want Dennis, then yeah, do it. Um, depends what else is in your team. If you could move someone else out to Dennis and then Pinnock onto someone else, so you both had him for that night. I know you then got a defender playing against the striker, which ain't really ideal. But have to see what you could do with your team. Uh, Dave, simple goal. I'd be interested to hear your points prediction for Rodri and Diaz over the next four. Is DS really worth the premium? Right, let's do that one first. So, what do I think? So, say what? Man City got Wolves, Leeds, Newcastle, Leicester. What? Three clean sheets, you know? He'll get past a bonus in all of them. So, what? 35 points, I think. You know, could be 40, could be more. Rodri, I think he's going to get your 24 points passing in each. You know, presume they both play all of them passing in all of them. Say he gets tackles in two of them, 24 points. So... Depends what you can do with the money, really. You know, he is, DS is a good sort of almost two million more. So, depends what you can do with the money. Um, also, would you prefer out of Antonio or Bowen? Or is both even a viable option? Yes, both is an option. Depends how many problems you've got in your team. I'd, I'd be happy to have either one of them. Don't know whether I'd, I'd have both. Um, but yeah, both good options. Uh, FPL binary. Thinking of Dunk to Antonio, which makes sense. But how stupid is Ben Rama to Fred? <laughs> so yeah, Dunk to Antonio, yes, I'll do that. Ben Rama, yeah, like I say, he hadn't really been doing it. Like, I was saying with Antonio, he hadn't really been doing it, but I can see him doing it. I, I just don't know Ben Rama. I, I don't think so, not for me. Fred, so Fred's, what, 7.6 million? His last game was a bit of a freak game. He got, what, 16 points, goal, man of the match. But he did get past him tier one bonus and tackle tier two bonus if you can keep that up you know even if he's getting passing bonus he could be your man you coverage for these games you know he'll probably play every game um i think he's gonna i think he's gonna do all right so he could be your captain you know people have gone for ronaldo and then you know he, he'll be on the bench and this that and the other yes <clears throat> he'll just tick over sort of nicely he's not going to get you a monster you know that 16 point of the weekend he ain't going to do that very often at all is he Whereas Ronaldo showed every week a couple of goals and, you know, he can smash the points in. But if you want someone to tick over nicely, Fred would do that and he'd cover you off if you didn't want to do Ronaldo. Or you could have Ronaldo as well, but Fred's then your coverage in case there is any rotation over Christmas. Uh, Johnny K. Uh, Johnny Belfast, as we know him. Can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm thinking of keeping Kane for another week, depending on the COVID issue at Spurs. Uh, as not convinced on who to get yet, am I making the move this week? And to who? And who to? If so, um, he'll just be gone to Ronaldo. I just can't be dealing with it. I'm, ca- I'm kind, kind of hoping the game on Sunday does get called off to make that switch easier. Because I, I don't like making a move when you're not gaining a fixture. But sometimes you just got to do it. And just Kane, he's got to go. Right. SB, is Rudiger to Maguire an unnecessary risk or a potential great move? Fixtures heavily favour Man U until the overhaul and Rudiger doesn't always get bonus as it is. Yeah, Rudiger is a bit of a concern. Just the chat, they just rotate him so much, don't they, in this, whether he's not signing a deal, that all just worries me. Maguire, I don't know if Maguire is the answer though. Um, Man U just can't keep, I know they kept a clean sheet last game, but they haven't been really keeping the clean sheets. Maguire, I oh, just, just don't like him. I haven't really looked at his passing numbers or anything like that, but I don't think so for me. I think there's better picks 
well, definitely is better picks than Maguire for me. But, you know, if you think think he's all right, do it as your team, mate. Uh, Phil Speck, uh, is now the time where Liverpool and City defensive assets will stretch ahead? And would you double or triple up on any of them? So got Cancelo and DS anyway. Yeah, hang on any Liverpool. Would like, I'd love Van Dijk and Trent. They are a bit pricier. Can't really get to them at the minute. I wish I could. If I had an overhaul now, I'd probably have them both in there because it's, They've been great. I don't know. They've got oh, Spurs and Leicester probably ain't what they used to be. Like they're red on the FF grid here. Do you know what I mean? But Villa, Newcastle, they're going to get, I think, clean sheets, pass and bonus. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm happy with my my, uh, my City defenders I've got. So I'm all right with them for the minute. Uh, Luke Seaton. Once the Watford Brentford game is done, I'll be cap catapulting Maguero out of my team faster than the government U turn. U turn. If Regulian is injured, I'll also be looking at replacing him. So which combo will be better until the overhaul? Trent and Rice or Van Dyke and Fred? Already have a double Chelsea City defensive cover, so that's nice. So that's the decision. Trent and Rice or Van Dyke and Fred? I think I would probably go Van Dyke and Fred. Um, like I just said, I think Fred could be all right now. Andy would cover you off. Yeah, that's what I'd go for. FPL Sky Addict. Would you focus on injury-only transfers through to the overhaul as over a busy period these could rack up? Currently on 26 transfers with Duncan Tony as must transfer soon, plus possibly Alonso and Smith Rowe. So are fixture-related transfers something to avoid a bit more until the overhaul? Yeah, like I said, like I put in Buemo in weeks ago to cover that fixture off. That was a bit of a way. You know, I could do this stuck in someone like Rice at the time, and I wish I had it done. Could earn a lot more points. So unless Buemo gets me a couple of goals or something Friday, it's just been a waste of me having him for the last month or so. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think I might be just doing the uh, doing the injuries because, um, yeah, like I said, there's so much rotation over Christmas and stuff. It is tricky. And with COVID and stuff, I'm a bit, you know, might be a bit worrying time. So, yeah, possibly just, just gets the overhaul, I think. I think I'm going to keep transfers till the overhaul. And sort of attack it from there. He's just sort of just tread and water at the minute. Can't seem to make any ground up. Sort of hovering. I got into the top thousand at the weekend and then dropped out again. I think I'm like one thousand one hundred and something at the minute. But I just can't make any ground up. It's been a terrible couple of weeks. But it has for everyone. No one's really had a great week. But you know, so we're all having a bad time. So when things aren't going great, the worst thing to do is be using transfers as well. So. If you can sort of stay where you are and not blow any transfers, I think it's probably the best move at the minute. Obviously, you've got a couple of injuries there, so yeah, you need to. But yeah, I'm kind of thinking just avoid trying to jump on three for ones, this, that, and the other, and just try to get a full team of 11 out when I can. Right, last few questions here, getting through them. Guy Wilcox, Silver or Rodri? Silver's in good form, but Rodri is more consistent with the bonus points, which we'd go for. Um, both... I'd have them both if you can. Um, as you said, it's tricky. I've got Rodri ticking over nicely. I would love Silver because he gets more points when he does. You know, I think they're going to be on about the same sort of points anyway. So either or, preferably both. Tommy Smith, he wants to get rid of Rafina and replace him with Bowen or Rodri. Which one? Depends. If you need a captain for Sunday, Bowen could be the one. If not, yeah, Rodri's a lot safer and you know he's on the five points a game at least. You know, but yeah, can't. Can't see a bit too much, but I think Rodri probably will edge him. Uh, where are we? Andrew Whitley, what would you say to Harry Kane if you met him in a pub this week? Apart from, do you have corona? What I'd say to if I saw him in a pub. So if I saw him in a pub in real life, despite moaning about him, I would be like, Harry, you're a legend. Can I get a selfie? Can I get a signed shirt? Preferably not a Spurs one. But what I'd like to say to him is... <laughs> A one sky because of you best part of fifty thousand pounds. You scored twenty nine goals, four hat tricks. That was amazing. This season's been rubbish. One goal just ain't acceptable, you know. And you're making me look a bit of an idiot having you in my team, and that's why I can't make any headway this season. But no, disappointing. Any, um, just Kane. I just can't believe it. I just don't know. Honestly, don't know what's going to happen. Is Man City going to go in for him in January or? I just don't know. I keep looking at his heat maps, and they just when you look compare him to Salah and other, he's just so far back. I just, I just don't know. I'm a bit scared to get rid of him because I know we'll start scoring. But I've been thinking that for weeks, so I just had to get rid of him and um, 
be done with it. Right, I quickly, uh, this is the league table for the bite size league. So Lewis Nichols uh, is top, Tom Powell second, uh, Daniel Young in third, Perry Hart in fourth, Liam Stevens in fifth. Only 30 points between fifth and first there, so we're going well. The guys there, so those five there are all in the top 20 overall, so going great. Really think someone who wins this mini league could go close to winning the whole thing, and I hope you do. So good luck, keep going. Um, and that's about it for this week. Like you say it is a double week, double sort of week, so um, you know, just make sure you're planned ahead and you know, just try to have things covered off and keep an eye on the news, like say the Spurs and the COVID and everything like that. So um, plan ahead and don't know, just do the best you can really. Um, won't be back this week, so I will be. Do you know, I don't know what day I'll be back next week because there's football every night next week. It will be a bit tricky, but I will be back next week at some point. Again, really appreciate you tuning in and, you know, all your questions and support and everything like that. So thanks a million and I'll catch you next week. Have a good weekend and uh, hope we get a few points.